uh, in an overall fintech world, which is a model of robo advisory, right? So, so you've seen models like Yuba from China, which is, a, which is the Alibaba model. Now there, no one is saying that, look, I want to buy insurance. You have a wider investment platform for the millennials. And you say, look, give me 100 rupees or yuan or dollar. I will make sure that you get maximum bank for the buck. Now what I do with that, leave it to me. Now in that case, people are not saying, look, I want to buy life insurance for savings. They're saying, I want to make my investments grow. grow. I want to make my investment protected. And what role, uh, I mean, and now, so what's your view? And obviously you represent uh, 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 in the next few months, uh, India's largest life insurance company. So what's your view in terms of uh, the model emerging where people or the, or the millennials will say, look, or I don't care about what's the product underneath as long as I'm able to get the maximum bang for my money. So do you see uh, insurance brands being as relevant or do you see brands which will white label or do robo models uh, take over using technology? So interesting point. I think um, I just want to uh, present three aspects that we work with in HDFC Life. One is the whole uh, customer experience and we talked about millennials here and uh, you know th these guys have grown up to an Amazon, they've grown up to an Uber. So they need things really fast. They are not going to sit and tell you, uh, you know, the details that you need. They'll say it's all available. Just pick it up. So that's one of the places that we've been seeing uh, the use of uh, robots, essentially, and robo advisory. What we are trying to work on is, uh, you know, have tools which kind of read your SMS in terms of your credits and debits, and then build a pattern. And do you, it's essentially an auto financial planning and kind of telling you what you need to be covered for basis the information that's already there with you. Uh, all, use all kind of sources that's available to, so that he doesn't have to enter information because they hate, the experience with Uber and Amazon is instant. Unfortunately, life insurance still is not instant. Uh, you still need to give us some information and that is the one piece that uh, we are looking at how that can, that entire process can be seamless. Uh, so this is uh, the, the new age. Uh, it's not just actually customers, it's also the employees that work for you, they all have this problem. They don't like friction. They need a very seamless process. And friction is what if you watch the fintech comes in or any new company that comes in into your area, that's the gap that they play on, right? And so on robo-advisory itself, this is one activity that we are doing. Second is uh, we have a concept of uh, ecosystems. What we talk about is um, the new age uh, customer is not really going to download a life insurance app. Right, his activities will be around, say, a Paytm or um, you know Amazon, Flipkart. So these are the ecosystems. The customer kind of spends most of his time around this, these platforms. So the idea is, how do you kind of participate in that ecosystem and be available to him? Here, you got to think about how you get, tell him about realities in life, give him nudges on health. You have to build a pattern basis the information that Amazon or Flipkart has about you as a customer. Uh, they know the age group, for example. So you know if this person is, uh, you know, has got a child, you've got to talk about child education. You give relevant nudges to him, which kind of tells him that, yes, I need something. He's obviously come to Flipkart to buy a product, but you also nudge him onto insurance. And that's one of the uh, play that we are looking at uh, seriously to be in the customer's ecosystem. So uh, let me just uh, switch gears from... Uh, uh, from life uh, to general insurance. And let me uh, uh, talk to Girish about this. So Girish, uh, obviously uh, you have, uh, you, you represent the largest private sector player in India, M market share almost 9.5%, uh, pretty much multi-channel, multi-product, you do anything and everything which uh, any insurance company, any, all products, all, all lines. Now, what we've seen is that, uh, and this is ex examples from outside the world. So a lot of times when some of the startups and the insurtechs come, or, or even, even before that, uh, uh, when the players came in different markets, uh, pretty much uh, the customers uh, start, uh, when they start interacting with some of these disruptors directly, move away from the incumbents. Now, this happened in 
a lot of markets across the world, and we can look at examples from the US, from China, from, from, uh, uh, from Europe, I mean, anywhere we can look at examples. Now, you obviously being the largest player uh, and looking at protecting yourself or ring fencing or the flanking this. So how do you see partnerships when you look at it? Because obviously uh, the, the person who could be disrupting uh, has a technology, has a vehicle. So if you look at home and auto insurance have been the two most disrupted businesses across the world. Uh, also, if you see, uh, I mean, uh, so I was reading about this latest uh, MIT darling called Insurify, which is actually saying, look, you don't even need, need, need to go to a Geico. I'm going to connect you to 35 different insurance companies looking at your, just your, your car's number plate, that's it. By looking at the number plate, I'm going to tell you what kind of driver you are, what's your age, everything about you. And that's the model, and, and obviously it's raised fund recently. Now, some of these players, do you really see them as, I know India has still not had a player yet, and we'll talk about it in a bit, but how do you look at the, fl the flanking strategy as the biggest private sector player in India? No, uh, we uh, definitely are looking at uh, partnering with InsurTech companies uh, at early stage because, uh, and we consciously try to reach out to them. We have started a program called NOAA where we, uh, it's like a startup incubator and uh, we had a first batch uh, last year. Uh, what is interesting is uh, we don't look at InsurTech from just the limited point of view of what people uh, look at either in terms of uh, uh, telematics or pay as you go kind of stuff. What we are really looking for when we are looking out to the startup ecosystem is, uh, people who have a solution which do some form of risk management and how can we use that to develop products. And uh, a couple of examples which uh, I can tell you which came out from uh, the first batch of our uh, incubator. Uh, one was uh, a company which was doing uh, predicting yields for crops. And uh, as you know this, this year because of uh, the pr Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, uh, crop insurance has grown from uh, 5,200 crores market to 22,000 crore market. So that is a, that's going to be a significant uh, area in the future to m manage your uh, crop insurance program better. The other one was cattle insurance. The company was, major, was measuring uh, health for cattle. Uh, it had a kind of, just to put it crudely, a Fitbit for cows. Now using that, we have developed a product where we are able, where we are going to uh, guarantee the yield uh, for uh, a dairy. Now that's using technology uh, startup. I mean, these guys never even thought they had something to do with insurance, but came into our incubator and we could do these pilots with them to then work out these costs. So insurtech is not just limited to what the general world looks at insurtech, but how we can part up, partner with anyone in the startup ecosystem who has any kind of risk management solution and make it work for insurance. I mean, that is broadening the whole play for uh, the insurance companies. Thanks. Let me now move uh, to uh, Varun Dua. Varun Dua uh, is, uh, was the co-founder of CoverFox and now he's setting up uh, and he's a promoter for setting up a, a, a more online insurance company. Uh, and, and hopefully, Varun, I understand you will be up and running next six months, the company. Yeah, so the question is now you have no legacy, right? Uh, you have, uh, I mean, the entire universe is yours. You can do on-demand insurance, you can do pay-to-pay -pay insurance, you can do anything and everything, right? So how do you think, I mean, uh, you would be able to create competitive advantage in the market using technology? Uh, so, uh, I think uh, across the panel, whatever we've discussed so far, uh, primarily, uh, especially in India, I do see a situation where, uh, you know, we jump, uh, sorry to say this, we end up jumping the gun a little bit. A lot of the problems that uh, personally I see in, in the sector uh, have to do with uh, the way, like you rightly mentioned, there's uh, channel conflict, there's legacy systems, there's speed of movement. Uh, while the really solid technology solutions will come into the picture at a certain point in time, uh, I think uh, the way at least we are looking at it is to be able to solve a couple of these legacy issues and start off lean, start off quick, and fundamentally look at the business from a different lens. 
Uh, I'll just give you an example when I say fundamentally look at the business from a different sense. What do I mean by that? Uh, most insurance companies, if you take a general general insurance company at least, a PNC company would have you know 60% to 70% uh, money being paid out in claims, 20-25% being paid out in distribution, another 10-15% in being paid out in, in in you know running their own company or the management expenses per se, and throughout what we are seeing is that fundamentally a customer can never be happy with an insurance company that's the lens that we are coming from because if he pays you a premium and he doesn't claim he's not happy because he thought he's paid and he's got nothing and if he claims he's anyways in a bad mood uh, so fundamentally you don't you, you can never keep uh, you know a uh, customer happy so from that perspective it's very important for insurance companies to look at products which fundamentally allow them to pay more claims, which means that you have to keep your distribution costs and your own cost really low, which, which is the first place where technology should attack. Uh, technology should start attacking places in uh, efficiency, in areas where maybe 5,000 people are not required to run an insurance company. Can it be done with 100 people? Can your distribution models be very, very different, which are very lean? Uh, can you not get stuck into uh, 30, 40 percent sort of distribution uh, costs is when you have a pool of, uh, of of money left to pay the customers, and the only way for an insurance company then doesn't become, you know, how do I keep reducing my uh, my losses? So from a perspective of technology, no legacy, and so on and so forth, I think the market's going to evolve. I think the first place where uh, technology will come into play is distribution efficiency your general efficiency of running the company, and then some of these things, some of these niches are going to open up as we go along. Uh, so from your po uh, point of view, when you asked me that, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a green field, there's no legacy, absolutely, we want to tackle the basic things first, and then look at the niches that, can, you know, technology can open up faster. Thanks. Uh, so a lot of these technologies, a lot of these uh, new things require investments. And Lata, let me turn to you, I mean, uh, AXA, which the firm you represent, is one of the biggest investors today. You have a fantastic facility uh, in the Silicon Valley. I'm told you're roughly spending about $300 million year on year in time to see what are the new opportunities and uh, of, to collaborate. Now, from your perspective, uh, what are some of the key areas within, so, so we heard uh, from all the panelists so many different uh, things, so we heard uh, from from uh, from Thompson in terms of how is uh, I mean uh, how are you going to have insurance and a much wider from a, to the customer experience perspective. We heard from from Shwetang in terms of uh, what really is attacking uh, is attracting the millennials. Greece talked about new new in, new vistas opening in agriculture. Varun said he has only legacy; he can do everything. Now, when you as AXA, one of the biggest world insurance companies, look at different areas, I mean, you can spend that money into doing so many different things. So how do you really think through and allocate at, a f at that level? So really in three different buckets. Um, uh, one is the very uh, basic on digitization, right? So what Varun alluded to and a lot of the panelists have, which is taking processes and making them efficient, right? So that's uh, uh, somewhat of an inside view. Then the second bucket is taking data. So we're investing a lot on data and take creating differentiation. So digitization, differentiation, and then disruption. So there's a lot of energy that is going in uh, differentiation. We've got a data lab, uh, as you all are aware, in Singapore. A um, lot of the telematics and that kind of, how do you use that to create a differentiation in pricing, differentiation in customer experience and so on and so forth. So that's the second uh, bucket where a lot of energy is going. And the third is disruption. And uh, you know, we, you, we have in Shanghai uh, Innovation Lab where a lot of experiment, pretty similar to Zongan kind of uh, model is happening. Um, if you ask me what would I like to see differently from what's happening, um, maybe, um, most of the energy is going 70% in uh, di digitization and maybe 30%, 20% in differentiation and 10 in disruption. And the value is absolutely inverted, right? The other way around. So if I were to do it differently, I would just invert that. 
Let us, I mean, uh, just hold on because you made a very good point and I would first like to hear your response before I ask the other, other panelists on the same thing. Now, when we look at, uh, obviously you talked about uh, uh, Singapore, China, the US. Now, from an Indian persp India perspective, uh, to your point on data as well as uh, your point on disruption, uh, most of the insurance companies today are still focusing on, on the, the first, first which is realization. So that, that's a very good point which you made. Now, data, I mean, there are specific uh, insure tech, fintech model in the US. For example, there's this uh, company called uh, Capital City, which says, look, data can be in a form filled by, a, by an agent. Data can be somewhere on the net. Data can be in, in your voice log. Data can be in a text message. I'm able to look at all of that and come with uh, models. Now, what do you think is really limiting Indian startups should think in that direction because is it the education system? Is it the system of the universities? Because there, if you see, I mean, MIT graduates from a garage get funding from angels. India, that's not an issue. Uh, venture capitalists in India are not really active. So, first of all, uh, do you think India has an issue with talent, or do you think uh, venture capitalists and insurance companies can do a lot more in India? So I'm going to be a little blasphemous here. India doesn't have a problem with talent. India has a problem with attitude. So uh, if you look at why it's not happening as aggressively as it needs to, uh, the startup companies, my experience, the ones I worked with, know their area or domain, but they are not able to translate that into a business use case. So that's one gap. Um, organizations are, you know, at least I spent 25 years with City prior to this. And I can talk from my experience there more than I can talk.